And welcome back to the Microsoft 365 Knowledge Series. I'm Paul Thrott. Once again, I'm joined by Stephen Rose, Senior Product Marketing Manager for Microsoft 365. But this time around, we're also joined by Chris Bryan, the Product Marketing Manager for Microsoft Teams. Hello, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, you know, this is an interesting coincidence. Over a month ago, we had kind of plotted out what we would be talking about for this fourth episode, Microsoft Teams. And, of course, the way the world has changed in the time since says has made that all the more important that that's what we're talking about so we thought we'd have chris join us um, to get a subject expert in here and kind of help uh you know broaden out the conversation a little bit um obviously we need to address the the covid 19 pandemic and the fact that the new normal is we're working from home when possible um i know in my own neighborhood we see lots of families out today you know every day walking and um, you know, the world has changed and will probably continue to change. Um, I just want to, if I could, I, I don't know that this was made public, but Microsoft made a video with uh, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella and uh, Jared Spataro talking about how this pandemic has impacted Microsoft and its customers. And, and two things really struck uh, me in this conversation. One was the fact that uh, Nadella said that he was basically living in Microsoft Teams, and I assume my, most of Microsoft is, Mm -hmm. these days as well. But then Jared Spataro said, you know, we're never going to go back to working the way that we did before the pandemic, which I thought was really interesting. I mean, can you two maybe talk a little bit about uh, the changes that you've seen, especially at, at Microsoft? Well, I think, you know, first we're working from home. You can see myself and, and Chris were in our home offices. And it's been great to be able to do exactly what we tell our customers all the time, which is, hey, you can flip on Teams, you can work remotely, you can be just as productive as you can from the office. I think the most interesting thing for us is the human component, that it's not just the collaboration, but it's also we've set up a chat twice a week to just sit with the team. How are you doing? How are you faring? You know, we're it's an interesting time. So it's also making sure that the water cooler conversation that happens normally organically can happen inside of teams and that that has to be set up. So I think that's probably the first part. I think the second thing has just been so many customers saying, hey, we need to do this. And I think to speak to Jared's comment, for all these companies that said, yeah, our people can't work from home, they have to be here, which is such a 2010 kind of thing where you can only be productive. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I know it sounds, you know, like it's yeah. like I'm talking like 100 years ago, but in 2010, that was it. You had to be in the office to be productive. I think we've shown you can work from anywhere on any device, on any platform and be productive and get the work you need to get done each day without being in the office. So I think it's going to get a lot of companies to rethink their policies on where people can work from and how they can work. And I think that's going to be probably one of the longest beyond just the technology is just how that affects companies. Chris, what are, what are you seeing? Yeah, just to expand on that, I think the human component, as you mentioned, it, it's critical. I think when we think about how people work in the office, it, beyond just coming together in a meeting to do work, there's also that aspect of culture um, and the different parts of when people come together, whether it is a sideway conversation, going to lunch, or just other opportunities to connect. So um, a lot of the change into this remote work is how do you translate that into a virtual environment? Um, so we see a lot of our customers, ourselves in Microsoft, uh, doing things like group meditation. So we just come into a virtual environment and we just meditate together or having virtual happy hours for people to have casual conversations. They still are at their own homes, um, enjoying a beverage, but still being able to do those casual conversations, relax a little bit and connect. Yeah, yeah. And Chris, I, I, I should have... Uh, not been so socially distanced before. Maybe you, you could tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm sorry I didn't uh, ask you that earlier. No, no worries. Uh, sure. So um, uh, my name is Christopher Bryan. I actually originally from Panama, so you probably can pick up my accent from my speaking. Uh, I've been with Microsoft for uh, almost about uh, eight years now. Um, I've been in the Teams team for a while, probably almost two years. Um, and my focus within the Teams uh, product is all about our IT pros. So when we think about security, manageability, compliance, um, that's my uh, areas, of, our areas of expertise. Okay, great. Thanks. And um, you know, we're going to go through some of the, the features and functionality of Teams. We're going to talk more broadly about working remotely and the ways in which Team enables that kind of collaboration. And also, of course, about some of the 
uh, steps that people can take, the best practices to secure uh, their remote workers to make sure that everything is happening in a secure fashion. But there was some big news uh, last week about Microsoft team, uh, Teams, which you know we will get to. Um, it might be uh, advisable to kind of go over the history teams really briefly. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but when they said, Microsoft said, when you said that uh, Teams was three years old, I, my first two reactions were, wait, it hasn't been around forever. And then wait, hold on a second. It's been three years, really? <laughs> you know, um, you kind of lose track of that. Um, and I also find it very interesting because you, you and I, Stephen, had talked about this, that when Teams debuted in March 2017, it was described as a chat-based workspace, which of course it was. And then it's evolved dramatically since then. It's gone out to much uh, many different markets, education, uh, every uh, exercise enterprise or first line worker features, et cetera, healthcare, which is particularly important today. Um, but now it's described as a hub uh, for collaboration. And this speaks to that notion that I had that in many ways teams might be positioned for this new generation of work to become the new outlook, you know, where it becomes kind of this um, broader all encompassing tool. Yeah, and, and and even, you know, as Satya said, it's really kind of our new windows in many ways that this is yeah. this is the first thing you turn on during the day and, you know, and, and then it right. stays on it. It continues to run across all those platforms because it's more than just chat. I mean, we've got all the file sharing, knowledge sharing. One of the things that I always say to customers is they're like, well, why should we look at Teams? And I go, well, if you bring a new person onto a project, and you're using Outlook, but you're not using Teams and other things, how easy is it for them to get up to speed on this project? And I say, it takes 30 minutes. It takes one minute to add somebody to the Teams group and 29 minutes for them to read through the chat, <laughs> look at the files, watch yeah. the videos, be able to yep. search those videos so for the specific things that they're looking for and get up to speed rather than I'm going to send you 100 emails, I'm going to send you to five shares, I'm going to send you this document that was written by somebody who left the company a year ago, and this should be everything you need to get up to speed, which is insane if you think about it that way. And that's one of the things that I've always shared with customers. Chris, what about yourself? Yeah, no, I, I think the, the key advantage of Teams is because it brings everything together in one place. It's a, it helps customers and users ultimately to reduce the context switching. So instead of having to jump around to multiple applications, being able to see everything in one place, um, and to your point, having all of the modalities, whether you need to call, whether you need to chat, whether you need to actually use an application, whether it's native Microsoft application or a third party, everything is right there for you. Um, so I think that has uh, significantly changed the way um, I use your approach productivity on a day-to-day -day basis. To give you an idea of the, the, the scale that is occurring here, um, I think Microsoft Teams back in November had about 20 million daily active users. And in the week before uh, Microsoft was going to make this announcement last week, they had contacted the press and they had said, well, there are 32 million daily active users, which is obviously an incredible jump. Uh, but then one week later, and that was the crucial week where everything kind of changed. Mm -hmm. um, the usage jumped to 44 million active users. And we'll talk some more about the numbers and the, and, and the news from last week. But I mean, I, this uh, is probably going to continue. I mean, we have more and more people coming online, uh, not just at businesses, but at educational institutions as well. I mean, what are the, what are the core uh, areas of functionality that these uh, companies and educational institutions need to look at? And, and where do you see the, big, the biggest gains or the biggest benefits of working in teams while we're remote as we are now? Chris, I'll let you take that one. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think uh, there's a couple. I think, first of all, meetings. It's a big area for us. Um, when we think right. about um, the difference between being in a virtual environment and being in an office, that face-to-face -face interaction through video is critical. So a lot of those type of connections are being leveraged now through video. Um, that's one. Um, when we think about in the education sector, being able to move a lot of those in place in classes, so like face-to-face -face classes online in a virtual environment. Um, that's another way when Teams comes into play, being able to deliver co online courses, um, it's critical for universities. Um, one, to be able to still uh, deliver their promises to their uh, students, even in these tough places. 
Um, at Team Beyond, that calling and chats, of course, are a big part of like a day-to-day -day basis. That's something that we saw when people were already in their offices and they continue to move into a virtual environment, leveraging those as well. Right. Right. I think the other thing to add to that is also that folks are realizing how many partnerships we have and how many different applications. Yeah. Also, click it and work from Salesforce to, you know, there are hundreds that we have. So that going, oh, I didn't know that I could just make a tab and have this application here. I don't need to switch between these additional apps. So it's not just that it works within the Microsoft ecosystem, that it works with a wide variety of, mm -hmm. of applications and products that customers use every single day. And that becomes another thing too, where it becomes this pain. And you know, we had talked about that four generations of workers. And right. as we start to look at those newer levels uh, of workers that are not using as much email, this is so natural. And it's like, oh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So it, it's also bringing that into play as well. Yeah, I think, you know, meetings is kind of the, in many ways, the core part of Teams. And this is an area where we have some uh, some videos we can kind of step through. Um, the interesting thing about this is that meetings actually become more accessible when you do them through Teams because of all the excellent features, live captioning, inline translation, uh, transcript searching later after the fact where you want to go back and find something that was said. I mean, um, it, it's getting to the point where th this almost speaks to uh, Mr. Spataro's uh, uh, emphasis on the fact that things are going to change forever. I mean, in many ways, I think what we're going to discover during this time is that some of these features are still going to be valuable when we're able to go back and be in the room at right. the same time as well, uh, that we might want to still be using uh, uh, Teams in some capacity. So uh, does it, do you think it makes sense uh, for us to maybe step through a couple of these? Yeah, uh, let's do it. Uh, okay. So the first one uh, that we have is a uh, feature that I believe is coming soon. It's the chat pop-out uh, functionality. Yeah, so what we have here is that ability that if you're chatting with someone that you can take that single chat, pop that out, you can then, if you need to, close the window, move to other things and have that sitting on top, which has been a feature that folks have been asking for for quite a while. And it really helps that way if you're engaged in three chats, you're not having to switch between that, but you can have those open and multitask with it. It's simple, yeah. but it, it's a fan favorite and something that folks have been asking for. Right. I think it just speaks to the maturity of the application as we move forward as well. Uh, yeah, as you see yeah, similar features in email applications and so forth. Um, and then we, we might have shown this one before. I think it's really important, uh, the live captioning capability. Uh, and this is the on-the-fly AI-assisted uh, stuff here with Stephen. With me, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that ability as we talk about um, diversity and inclusion is great. Not only is it grabbing this and you can see it, but for folks where English is the second language, uh, where reading is easier than listening or really focusing, looking for specific things. This is really great to be able to do this. And I'm excited about where this feature is going to go. And then those tra that, that, that transcript that you're looking at, uh, you know, that, that transcription becomes a transcript that's also searchable. And that's, that's right. great when you're going, I'm just looking to see when they mention this within an hour long meeting, be able to get right to that point. Or again, if you're getting back up to speed to go to the parts that are important. Uh, it's so but, crucial, whether you were in the meeting or not, you know, after the fact to go back yeah. uh, and see that. And reading and hearing also increases retention. So you have an mm -hmm. aspect there as well. And that's been long proven. Okay, and actually we do have a video uh, for a transcript search, so maybe we could look at, that's a little out of order here, but we, maybe we could look at that as well. Yeah, so after you, uh, you know, in any meeting, once it's recorded and uploaded to stream, you can type in any term, and it will show you every time it shows up within the video, and then by simply clicking that, uh, the phrase, it will take right. you right to that moment in the video. This is uh, so powerful. It, what it reminds me of is the feature that debuted in OneNote years ago where you could uh, take notes and record the audio of a meeting and it would synchronize the notes that you took with the yeah. audio, which is super helpful because most people can't you know, type everything that's said, but you can at least get to that point and, and, and figure out where something is, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, there's also a, uh, an inline translation uh, feature as well, which we have a video for. Oops. Chris, how many languages do we currently support now with this? I believe it's 53. Okay. Yeah, incredible. And again, it's the same thing, supporting that diversity and inclusion that just allows <laughs> you to be able to simply just click a phrase, have it translate into your language, be able to type, have somebody go back and forth so that we're breaking down those barriers and making it much easier to work with people from a wider variety of places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, it speaks to the you know the world getting smaller, which is ever more important, you know, given what's happening, but also to the accessibility end. Um, yeah. you know, I have a son who's deaf, for example, and he relies on uh, subtitling and things like this. So this kind of functionality is just is just key for that audience. Yeah, my daughter is auditory processing, <laughs> so for her to be able to read and hear is great right. and very interesting because they're starting school again today on Teams. Oh, and nice. I'm very interested to see how those features are going, if they help her in some of the classes. Uh, so I think it'll be very interesting to see how that goes forward. Yeah, I bet it, I bet it works really well, actually. Yeah. And then uh, you, Stephen and I had uh, kind of joked about this last week, but uh, Jeffrey Snover, a Microsoft fellow, has been, in my words, single-handedly making this uh, whole thing bearable by uh, posting pictures every day of his custom backgrounds, which is another feature of Teams. Uh, because Jeffrey, like all of us, is forced uh, to work from home here. Yeah, I've had fun picking some some nice <laughs> ones with this because you can upload your own yeah. as well. So the one that I has behind her is a custom one that goes beyond. Right, so right. yeah, there's a bunch of really fun stuff that that you can do, but it does work really great. I picked that office one, and people said. I thought you were supposed to be working on <laughs> Braver. And I said, hey, check out the cool background. Nice. Sure. Yep. Um, yep. Which is great. So, yeah, you can have fun with it, too, which is really nice. But it really does help go beyond the blur, which which is awesome. When And I know so many people go, oh, my house is a mess. So I flipped on blur. Uh, or people are, are walking right. around. But it does allow you to do branding and some really mm -hmm. cool stuff with that. So yep. it's it's a great feature. Cool. So uh, we talked about meetings as one of the core areas of Teams, but there are others. Uh, maybe we could speak a bit to the uh, first line worker features. Chris, why don't you take that? That that's all you. Yeah, sure. From a first line worker, um, there's a lot of capabilities that Teams brings to the table when it comes to um, making sure that the needs are met. Um, I think one of the most powerful features that we released in the last couple of years is the Shift application. Uh, so when we think about historically how uh, first line workers work. They typically had have probably a printed piece of paper with their schedule. They find their name and they will come back to the store when their shift is. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, problems with that. So if you need to change your shift, does that mean you have to go physically in the store or go somewhere to read the schedule to you? Um, and that's when the shift app streamlines a lot of that uh, specific uh, processes. Um, so now first line worker are empowered to control their schedules, being able to connect better with the rest of the um, employees in the store, being able to contact their managers easier, um, and also giving a lot of capabilities for managers to connect with their first line worker uh, to guide them into what they need to do in the shift, assign them tasks, send communications, whether it's to one specific person or the entire team in the specific shift. Um, so that's has that that has revolutionized the way that um, teams has empowered first line workers. Two, two of my favorite features in that one is you can actually give the ability for employees to be able to trade shifts with each other. So you can actually go in and say, hi, I have this shift. Would you like it? See who's available. The other one that I really like is from uh, mobile. You can also do a location feature. So if you have a driver who's out, they can actually go up and they can say, hey, how long do you get to your next stop? They can actually hit location. It will send them a quick map of exactly where that person is and a location so they could go, okay, I see that you're here. Yeah, this would be great if you could do a stop over here or et cetera, uh, it can really help. So it's little things like that that really set it apart, but give it that, oh, that that's a great time saver for a lot of people in many different ways. And just so we're clear, from Microsoft's perspective, a first-line worker within an organization is the person who is literally out on the front line dealing with a customer or a customer situation. So it could be a retail worker, uh, obviously a healthcare worker these days, someone who is, um, I don't want to say furthest removed from the center, but they literally in many cases are out in, in either retail uh, locations or restaurants or in uh, hospitals and, and, and that kind of thing. So these are the people who are interacting uh, yeah. out at the edge of the organization, I guess. And so they're they- Very, very uh, often a deskless worker. Yes, so they, right. So they're not gonna have a computer, typically or a standard type of computer. They might have a mobile device in many cases or uh, a mobile, uh, yeah, mobile device of some kind. So, or okay. Tablet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Go ahead, Chris, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, sorry. So I was gonna say, um, so Paul, to, to your point, I think when we think about first line workers, they're definitely a mobile first 
uh, mm -hmm. worker. So a lot of the capabilities that we're talking about being enabled by team are, have been optimized mm -hmm. to be used in the phone. Um, so to give right. another example of that is um, we announced uh, the cap a capability called Walkie Talkie. Mm -hmm. um, so that has been historically used in most of uh, first line worker scenarios where you have uh, a Walkie Talkie that is a separate device from your phone or any other tablet that you may have as a first line worker. Um, and that specific device is meant to connect you with the rest of um, your specific store because there is a specific boundary on radio. Um, now in Teams, we bring in that functionality by enabling to uh, work from your own uh, mobile device. Mm -hmm. So instead of having two separate devices, it just comes into one device. And instead to be limited by the radio, uh, given the technology that typically walkie talkies use, um, now because you use um, internet, you can connect not only to one specific store, but multiple stores and being able to troubleshoot uh, specific things, maybe requests from a customer about availability of a product at scale now. Right. So in other words, these clients are connected to the cloud. They can use cellular or Wi-Fi or whatever type of connectivity they have. The physical distance doesn't matter in the same way that, you know, we're probably 2,500 miles apart. <laughs> we're communicating. Um, yeah. And it gives you that walkie-talkie style functionality, but through the Teams app itself. Right. And I think the key thing for folks who are playing with this or trying to use this is when they're using, you know, Teams on mobile, Mm -hmm. that way uh, hit that little hamburger button down at the bottom because some really cool stuff pops up and will happen uh, when you do that a lot of folks don't realize that we have all these great apps that happen so that little three button that says more hit that and that's where you'll see a lot of the shifts and you know to do and organization and, and things that I use all the time and a lot of people don't realize that that's down there it it, you, it was a swipe up and now it's turning into the into the hamburger button to make that even better and to support even more. So check right, that right. piece out if you haven't already. Yeah, and, and the, the first line worker experience is kind of a broader set of features aimed at that audience that exists in Microsoft 365. I and mean, today we're just talking about the, uh, the team's specific features. Um, and then also there are, uh, and we, we, I think you spoke about this briefly uh, at the top of the show, but there are, there's this notion of policies and settings and things that IT pros can do um, to lock down Microsoft Teams, which is a, a sudden need, just as the need for Teams in more and more places and with more and more people is a sudden need, unfortunately. Um, what are some of the capabilities there? I mean, and maybe we should get into some of the, uh, the best practices as well for IT pros. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, the great thing about Teams is that um, the same way that you used to manage some of the other M365 applications, uh, that may be by Teams. So if we think about like a security and compliance perspective, the same admin portals that you use, the security admin portal and the compliance admin portal, that can be Teams um, can be managed from there. But when we think about the core experience, we have designed an, a Microsoft Teams admin center that brings together all the controls that you need. Um, they're going to be here. You're going to find settings uh, that apply to the entire organization, but we all, but also have policies that allow you to customize the team's experience to specific types of workers, the specific needs. Um, just to give you an example, um, you have org wide settings. With org wide settings, you can uh, tailor things like, do you want to have the ability to federate with other tenants? Do you want to have the ability to um, allow guest access into your um, organization. So for those of us that may have not heard of guest access, that's the ability of bringing someone who is outside the organization into the team's environment so they can collaborate with you in channels, documents, so have that rich collaboration still in a secure environment that you have control over um, and you don't have to worry about the potential uh, nuances of uh, external person uh, having too much data or control over your environment. We Lock that down, you have the controls you need so you feel secure and you feel confident and enable them to your users. So a couple of other things to mention when we think about core functionality of Teams, we think about meetings, we think about applications, we think about um, Teams and channels. Um, all of that also come with settings and policies. Um, just to give you a couple of examples, we um, last Ignite, we released private channels, which is one of the great capabilities that we bring into the product, being able to have focused collaboration within the team's ecosystem. Um, you have as an admin the ability to decide who can create private channels in the organization, whether you want to lock it to specific people, maybe like department uh, support staff, or you want to enable it for everything, everyone. Uh, whether in the, you want to create specific meeting policies to allow people to decide whether 
who should be able to control uh, the screen, who should be able to represent. Um, those are also controls that you have uh, as an IT admin too. Um, and finally, from a, an application perspective, because um, as we mentioned before, um, Stephen, you mentioned that Teams also brings a, brings third-party applications uh, into the frame. Um, as an admin, you have the ability to decide what applications are available to your users. Uh, do you want to enable them to everyone or just specific um, people in the organization? Um, as well as being able to access our app catalog so you can confidently understand what are the specific details of the application so you know whether you want to enable them or not if they meet the compliance requirements of your organization. Uh, so I'm going to stop there. Those are a couple of, <laughs> of features for us to discuss. Uh, I do have a lot more, yeah. but uh, maybe we can start there. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think that's part of the challenge, right? So, uh, first of all, we, we're dealing with just the the human need to uh, interact, uh, both personally and at work. But um, at work, in uh, particular, we have to uh, secure that as well, and that it, those capabilities are available. I think Microsoft, for whatever it's worth, has done a really neat job uh, over the past, I would say, two three weeks month, of um, just starting to really document this stuff. Not that. It wasn't documented before, but just blogging about it because it is new to so many people now. Uh, there's just a whole. I'm sure there in many organizations the the notion well, we have teams and you know we use it in some capacity, but now it's very central um, to what we're doing and that that need to, not just to use it but to secure it um, is 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 sudden, you know, unfortunately, and <laughs> is something we need to figure out. Yeah, no, I, I I had one or two customers that said, hey, you know, a two year ago, year and a half ago, we rolled out Teams and everybody's just using it for chat. And it was a lot of it because they still had X drives and things like that. And they really sure. hadn't planned out how they were going to move folks over or haven't trained. And we have so many great resources to help IT pros, mm -hmm. to help end users, to drive campaigns, to help people understand the functionality, why this change is good. Um, so hopefully IT pros are also taking a look at all that content and we'll provide mm -hmm. some links for that where they can go out and say, hey, here's a great cheat sheet. Here's five things that, that you may not know about the product that it can do, encouraging people to do that and leaving the product not too locked down so that people may say, hey, you know what? I know that you don't think that this is important, but this is a really great feature for us and here's what we're able to do with it. And to really not try to overly control end users, but to create a partnership to let them do things. And also best practices, because there is a lot of potential for team sprawl. So really who can create those teams? Right. Right. This is how we as a company are doing it. If you're going to create a team, it should be under these circumstances. If not, this is something within the team. So it's also really sitting down, chatting with your different users on how they want to do it, and then bringing that together. And that really sits firmly in the role of IT. So it's yeah. a really critical thing to be able to do. Yeah, that notion of team sprawl is something we had seen before with uh, self-service IT and SharePoint. I mean, it's it's kind of a yeah. a thing that happens uh, again and again. But I, I I think you know, in the making lemonade sense of with what is going on in the world, I mean, one of the you try to look at some of the positive outcomes. If if you know, it's unfortunate that this happened, but you know, the conversation around Teams, say last November, might have been, well, Teams is a tool in your arsenal. It's one of the many ways that your organization can use to communicate and collaborate. And right. you know, there are old timers that like to use Outlook and email, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I, you know, in some ways this is driving uh, more of a central solution uh, because of the need to work remotely. And I think people who may have been resistant to it in the past can suddenly see the, the advantage to it. Mm -hmm. And we've also seen companies do some great things with power apps and flow to start to automate yeah. the product and things like that too. And that's yeah. another thing is that once you get through this, go back and take a look and say, hey, how can we start to automate processes, set That's up right. approvals? Uh, we've had some great case studies on customers who have built really simple power apps to be able to search databases and be able to know, hey, this is where that part is with a low code or no code solution. So that also becomes that double click as you start to <laughs> dig in deeper that you can also bring that functionality into the product. There's also probably some learnings that are coming out of this situation where because we are suddenly now working we can kind of talk theory uh, you know <laughs> but confronted by the fact well we are literally now working from home there are um, going to be spikes in usage at certain times of the day there's going to be certain uh, situations that maybe weren't immediately obvious but now that we're living it you know you can kind of see so uh, you know again this 
the COVID pandemic has uh, maybe really brought home the fact that this is something we need to pay attention to. We need to manage it. We need to observe how it changes the rules and uh, we need to adapt with it accordingly, just like as, as Teams is as well. Yeah. So um, we talked about some of the, we talked about a lot of the meeting stuff, but there's, there are other features in Teams, obviously, um, that are useful when you're working remotely. Um, Real-time collaboration features, for example. Did you want to speak about any of uh, that functionality? Yeah, sure. So um, I think when we think about collaboration, specifically when we think document creation or having to create deliverables, um, Teams offers that integration with the rest of the M365 that allows customers to, within the framework of things, being able to co-author in documents real time, being able to comment in each specific line so everyone understands what needs to change, how do we get this to the finish line. Um, I think that's one of the great advantages that we have uh, when we think about teams bringing the power of M365 and other applications into the same frame. Right, um, right. And I think it's the evolution of work. It may start as a chat, it can move into a document so you can collaborate. Maybe there's a specific situation in the document or a specific missing data point that you need to clarify immediately. You can escalate into a call and solve everything seamlessly when you just jump and progress throughout the product functionality um, to be able to bridge that gap and get your work done. Right. I, uh, approaching work as I've done kind of in reverse of the way most normal people work in that I've been working remotely for a long time and it is rarer for me to be in a room with other people and, and going back and forth. One of the things I have noticed is that when you do that, um, things tend to happen because you can, sometimes you can work remotely and you can interact over chat or whatever, email, and things kind of happen slowly. But sometimes you get in a room and there's a whiteboard and you're drawing things and people are working visually. Mm -hmm. And um, it c tends to kind of come together. But that those capabilities are still available in Teams. That's one of the nice things uh, about Microsoft 365. They, they, those capabilities don't necessarily go away. You might not be in the same room, right. but you can, you can whiteboard, yeah. literally using a Microsoft whiteboard application, and you can do that collaboratively in real time. I think one of the other things, and this is, I think, something we talked about earlier, was in my previous role with OneDrive, I worked very closely with engineering. And it was yeah. my first time doing so. Um, and I would send an email and get an answer back a day later. And then I'd have a question on that. It would take three, four days to get a resolution. And then they go, look, we're on Teams. We do everything via chat. So don't send us emails. Well, we look at emails last um, yeah. because it was yeah. a much younger worker, different type of group, different type of way that they chose to collaborate and work together. So I'd find when I'd send them a text, hey, I have a question on this, I'd get an answer quickly. They would bring someone else in on the chat. That issue would be resolved and it was very much about, let's have a chat, resolve that issue and then move on to whatever's next. And it was great because within a few minutes, I was not only getting the answer, but connected to the right people. They would say, hey, here's a doc that has everything you're looking for. And all of us were able to move on to what's next. And it took me yeah. a little while to go, wow, this is, this is better and this is really a new norm. And when you think about it, you know, you're going to have more and more and more of those experiences as you start to move forward. So that that's another thing, you know, in real world, which I think people are going to start to see is chat is so much more efficient than email in many ways. I, you know, my favorite oh, line sure. ever was a Gen Z said, look, you know, email is how you tell me that there's donuts in the break room, <laughs> not how you tell me about anything important. And I went, I, I get it now. I understand. Email is increasingly the the telegram, <laughs> or you know, of the of the communication <laughs> world today. It's, it's it, it, and the other thing is, it, maybe this isn't true everywhere, but to me, there's a there's a formality to email that doesn't exist as much in the chat based uh, I mean, uh, chat in the chats essentially. So, um, I th I think that's valuable too for just getting things along, <laughs> you know. Um, and yeah. also there's an interruption uh, capability in chat, which is positive. I don't mean that in a negative way where uh, you just have a quick question, need a quick answer. Someone could be out in the world doing whatever they're doing. They can answer it and move on with their thing. Whereas email feels like more of a process, you know, something you have to kind of sit down and really consider. Did I reply to all? Did I, you know, uh, there's a lot of stuff you need to worry about. Um, and I, I hope, you know, again, I, I, I'm always looking for something positive to come out of something terrible, but uh, if this pushes more people into these kind of chat-based scenarios, I hope uh, it, it triggers a, a surge of usage in people that might previously not even consider. No, agree. 
Yeah, I, th I think we're going to find a lot of folks, you know, leveraging these platforms and also saying, hey, this doesn't work as well. So this we should really keep the process organic. This mm -hmm. is something new, which we realize we're now able to do that we couldn't before. So I don't think that Teams is the end all be all for everything. But I think certainly in many areas, it's going to allow people to do things that they couldn't either right. do before or do quite as easily or simply going, oh, that's really easy. I just drop that into Teams. I invite four people. I say, hey, everybody comment or do this. And this is much easier than sending out an email where I don't know who's looked at it or who has seen it or they don't know where to find things or they're searching their email looking for 20 different things. We're yeah. going to just keep this all here and everything related right. to that is right there. And that makes that much easier. Like, you know, with Chris and I said, hey, here's all the videos that I've shared with Paul. I dropped them into our chat. They were all right there. He could see everything. They're stored in files. So if he wants to go through them online, offline, they're all there. And that's much better than trying to send an email with that and figuring out what's what. So, yeah, and you I know, think it, see more of that. In, in a, a traditional office situation, that, that instance where you're working on something and someone pops into your door frame and says, hey, yeah, whatever the quick question is, and then they move on. The reason they're doing that is because they don't, well, A, they want to move around, but they they want to not have that formal email, will mm. I ever hear back? I just need the answer now. It's quick. It's not, you know, intrusive. And, I, you know, Teams gives you that capability remotely, which is, you know, super important these days. Agreed. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you folks had a ton of news last week, and this speaks to the new innovations that are coming in the product. And I think this is another important part of Teams that it's always evolving, uh, always improving. And uh, some of this stuff is really, really neat. Um, I mentioned earlier the 44 million daily active users. Some of the other numbers that came out of the, the news announcement last week was that 93 of the Fortune 100 are using Teams. And uh, 20 customers are using Teams across over 100,000 users each. In fact, I think one of them was... Uh, Accenture maybe was over two hundred thousand. It was there was some big some big numbers there, um, but some really cool features happening. Um, uh, these are not. I don't know what the time frame is. I don't think you folks are saying exactly, but let's say in the in the coming weeks and months uh, we'll see these new features. Is that accurate and okay to say? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So the coolest one to me. Uh, these are, a lot of these are awesome, but the the coolest one, and we do have a video for this, is the real time noise suppression feature, which is. Uh, uh, you'll see in the video soon has a uh, someone crunching a. If you're on a call uh, and you're joined in a meeting, and now somebody is starting to eat some chips, opening the chip bags, you can hear a lot of background noise, and it's very hard to understand me very clearly. Now with the power of AI, teams can remove that background noise, and you can understand me very clearly. Right, which is amazing. Right? And uh, any look. We're working from home. There are going to be vacuums going in the background. There's going to be kids running around. Um, hopefully you're not going to be playing video games, but we talked about it. It's a possibility. Um, you know, <laughs> things, you know, this is, uh, this is crucial in any situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's, it's especially well good where we have a worker, let's say at a construction site or something right. like that, where there's a ton mm -hmm. of noise going on that you can hear that and now hear that people hear that person, you know, easily or in a manufacturing floor or in a hospital where there's a lot of noise going on. And that's the thing also is. You know, we're so about getting people to turn on their cameras and companies are too, because that drives more engagement. You can't really be multitasking effectively when your camera's on, it's gonna be pretty obvious. And this is another thing to make that even easier for everybody to be able to do that and connect even in those noisier environments, especially as we look at those first line worker scenarios and make that a better experience for everybody. So you don't have to rely upon hopefully hearing what that person said, the transcription's better, everything will be better for folks, so it's cool. Chris, did you want to add any of the, the cool science behind that? Because there was some kind of neat stuff that we um, we announced that helps to power some of that. Yeah, yeah, so, so essentially what's happening is um, over time, teams will understand what is your language signal, so like your actual speech, and is being able to separate that from every other um, background noise. Uh, so it's not going to necessarily always going to understand, oh, this is your dog. It's just understand that this is just noise. And it's going to be able to separate that your speech and be able to block anything but your speech. Um, so when we think about the evolution of the product is uh, with background blur and customized backgrounds, we allow you to focus on your image and your video. Um, and now with this real-time noise suppression, we're going to be focusing on your speech. So you will have be able to be to do more focused meetings over time. Nice. Really nice. 
Um, I, I'm I'm always impressed by how many of the great features and teams are uh, make it the product more accessible. This uh, the new one is raise hand, mm -hmm. and this is a way for remote workers to just kind of send a visual signal rather than just blurt out an interruption uh, when they have something to say. Literally, the virtual version of someone in the back of the classroom raising their hand. You know. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think um, you know, my myself, I'm a, I'm always a remote worker, so this feature is actually something that is super useful when we think about having these huge meetings. Maybe there's some people in the rooms. There's some people that are online. Being able to raise that hand and um, get your voice in, if it's a little bit of a, maybe a, like a heated conversation, very passionate people in the room. Sometimes right. it's hard to get in a word. Uh, with this feature that allows you to send a visual reminder. Um, and people in the room can see that, stop, allow you time to chime in and being able to be uh, heard. Uh, hopefully you haven't been feeling that pain with Steven and I. We do like to talk. Um, <laughs> 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 no. Try to be inclusive. <laughs> I'll raise my um, hand in that case. Yeah, you can there raise you your hand. Yeah, raise your hand. <laughs> Um, I had never heard of Realware, but uh, Realware is an Android-based uh, AR headset, so similar, kind of an Android version of Paul Lens, I guess, um, and aimed at first-line workers, so another great first-line worker. Who These are people that are out at a remote location working on something, and they need someone back at the office, an expert perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, to see what they're seeing and then integrate in, or interact with them, I'm sorry, in real time. And uh, Teams now supports uh, Realware as well, or will soon, I should say. Um, that's, you know, another just, uh, uh, and I think this speaks to the um, extensibility aspect of Microsoft Teams, where it's not just uh, things that Microsoft provides internally, uh, but it works with other products and services as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think specifically for that um, integration, if um, you have, if for the listening, if you guys haven't seen the video, it's a great video in your last blog, uh, mm -hmm. but essentially um, it's integrated to a hard hat um, first-line workers can go up and maybe, maybe they're fixing a pipe, maybe they're fixing an, a, a vacuum um, system. Um, what this allows them to do is to do their work without having to worry about having any device in their hands. Um, and they be able to interact with teams through voice and be able to do, um, as Paul mentioned, call someone back in the office, show them what they're seeing, get instructions on how to fix it, uh, but also maybe take pictures for like the records and being able to do all of that without having to break their um, workflow of having to maybe go down, pick up a camera, take a picture. All of that is streamlined with teams and this integration with real work. Think about inspections and how much that would help if you were able to basically mm -hmm. record exactly what you're seeing, what you didn't know, yes, we did do a thorough inspection and mm -hmm. I looked at this, it was here. So even from a legal standpoint, it opens up some really interesting opportunities for our customers. Right, I just uh, even a basic safety standpoint, if it's something where you know, the, there is a first line worker on hand, but the expert who knows about the electrical system or whatever right. it might be, uh, which of these wires is going to electrocute me if I touch it? You know, <laughs> uh, you know, it's helpful to have that kind of interaction with an expert in the back end. Yeah. So, uh, Chris, are there any other of these new features that really stand out for you? Some, do you have any personal favorites in the? Because there is a long list, obviously, of uh, features that are coming. There is a long list. It's ooh, it's hard. It's like picking. Uh, what is your favorite children? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, I think a couple of ones that are, are my favorites, I think the booking app is very powerful, mm -hmm. um, especially when we think about um, uh, industry scenarios. Uh, for uh, for those of uh, who are new to the booking app, essentially it's the ability to schedule, manage, and conduct online meetings with people who, who are outside your organization. Uh, think about if you are um, a medical professional, being able to schedule meetings uh, through the booking apps to streamline the process of like, um, Schedule your patients. The patients uh, receive a personal personalized email from uh, with branding, and is able to join the meeting. Um, and if you need to manage your schedule, you can do that too. Um, from a uh, uh, organization, you can actually see um, everyone in your staff. Maybe you have multiple doctors on call. You're able to see uh, who is doing which meeting, being able who's available right. for a specific time frame. All of that within Teams. So again, I, I think it's a great. Uh, it's great value add for our customers. I can't help but think that this, you know, is a replacement for something in Outlook. And I'm, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I often see, I, you know, it's, I, I always, I, I don't know, for some reason, I, I always think of Teams as the new Outlook. 
Uh, we talked about pop-up chats, obviously. Um, what about offline and low bandwidth support? I mean, uh, obviously, uh, being able to handle poor network uh, conditions is is critical. But uh, how does how is Teams going to work offline? What does it mean to be able to use Teams offline? Yeah, sure. So, um, and I think this is an interesting um, time for us to be able to deliver this capability, especially a lot of people had to move to remote work and then perhaps not were prepared for the level of bandwidth they will need uh, to be working from home. Uh, but essentially, there's there's two aspects. There's being able to use Teams offline. So being able to, even if you don't have connectivity, being able to read your chats, being able to access things you have recently um, accessed, being able to maybe write a message, but if it's not, you're not connected yet, you're being able to send it when you're back connected. Um, and then there's an aspect of low bandwidth. Um, so being able to use Teams in very low bandwidth scenarios where you perhaps you, you're trying to send a chat out and instead of having to wait until have connectivity, being able to just queue it up. As soon as you have bandwidth, you will fire up. Um, so there's a lot of optimizations that we have done in that space to be able to um, give you access to the data that you have in Teams um, and understand that you need, still need to communicate. So uh, as soon as Teams has a queue of like, the, net, the right level of bandwidth, being able to fire that up out. Okay, cool. Um, you know, we're also starting to see uh, Teams, obviously, and Teams is intended to subsume a lot of the capabilities of uh, Skype for Business um, and what used to be, you know, the Office communication server, et cetera, et cetera. So we have uh, new devices coming online soon. But also uh, what I would say is a really interesting capability, which is uh, Microsoft 365 Business Voice, which is what uh, for, uh, for smaller businesses gives them the capability to transform Teams into a complete phone system which is, yikes, <laughs> that's very, very interesting. So how does, what's, what is, what's going on there? Well, I think from a team's perspective is um, we understand that um, different uh, type of businesses have different needs. And I think the SMB space is one of the ones that we want to make sure is empowered with everything right. that they need. Um, and being able to provide them with this service is um, to augment the portfolio of capabilities they have to include things like a telephony systems. Mm -hmm. So uh, to your point, I, I think is giving uh, those customers the option to make teams uh, and start thinking about teams as a hub for everything they need and avoid having to maybe outsource or use different applications mm -hmm. or different services to have um, everything uh, to be able to function. Right. Yeah. Steven, I don't I mean, know if you had any perspective on that. I, I think as we take a look at help desk and things like this, this is going to really dramatically help. And the cost savings, when small businesses take a look at what they're spending on telco today and maintaining those expensive phones, I haven't had a phone on my desk in years. And the ability to get away from that, that your iPhone and your Android tablet and your laptop are also your business phone and can really go anywhere opens up a lot of uh, opportunities and especially for emergency responders and things like that. It's just huge, the opportunities that it brings forward and allow them to communicate on different devices in different ways in different environments with that standardness that you tend to only get in the past from, from a landline system at an incredibly affordable cost that these companies couldn't do before. Also doing redundancy and backup. If something happens to your office, you can simply hit a button and now your whole call center is working from home. And I know living in California for many years, that was always a fear is what happens if an earthquake hits? We're out of business. Well, no, you're not because you could have the folks that were east of it or still service. They turn on, they're immediately up and running in minutes. And the business doesn't need to start rewiring itself in many ways. So it opens up some great opportunities for folks. Yeah, we used to, uh, enterprises would integrate with or have their own B, uh, PBXs or integrate with PBX. And then eventually it's virtual PBX. And then, right. uh, you know, now, and now it's being brought down to the smallest businesses, which is really cool. Um, before we go, I, I wanted to highlight the work that Microsoft has done on the Microsoft 365 blog. I would, I guess I would tell people just to search for that phrase because it's kind of hard to describe the URL to get to it. But uh, again, you know, over the past, uh, let's say, two to four weeks, uh, there's been an incredible amount of content about not just working specifically with Microsoft's tools, but um, about working remotely, about the IT issues that uh, Chris raised. Um, and it, it's an incredible resource. I mean, is there anything else you folks want to highlight before we call it a day here? 
I think, you know, I did a, I did a piece on adoption a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I have another one coming out on some really great features. I think it's, it's just checking out the stuff there and seeing the great work that our different teams have done and also hearing about how our customers and I think that's been the big thing for us is, yeah. hey, here are how customers are now working remotely. Here are some of the great things that they're doing to enable their workforce. Because it's great for us to say, hey, our product does this, but it's another thing to hear from all of our customers when they say, hey, this has really made a difference from your peers in healthcare, in manufacturing, in retail, et cetera, you know, education, health and life science, et cetera. Um, hearing from them really becomes the proof in the pudding and what they have to say and i really encourage folks to check that out to learn about the new functionality and how people are using this to see you know what functionality you may want to take a look at that can really change the way that that you do business chris yeah so um a couple of resources i think uh or microsoft Internet community blog for teams um that's where we post the latest and greatest um every month at least we put what's great what has been released over the last couple of month, months um, a couple of another one is um, we have a mechanic series. So if you are new to Teams and you want to see um, from security and compliance to adoption to if you're migrating from Skype, um, you can find that mechanic series at aka.ms slash Microsoft Teams for IT. Um, and finally, um, our technical documentation is a great place to um, get up to speed with deployment resources, uh, understand the technology. So if you go to aka.ms slash slash success with teams um, you will find a plethora of resources including a guidance uh, for IT to support uh, re um, remote workers so if you find yourself for the first time in this specific place um, that is a great place to get up to speed with what should you think about uh, adoption of teams for remote workers what do you need to do to your environment so I highly encourage people to uh, check it out Yes, and then the mechanic series that you referenced is that it's a video series, right? Or, that's Jeremy uh, Chapman's video series. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. yeah. So d there's something there for everybody, depending on how you want to learn or how you want to uh, uh, find out more about teams. So uh, video uh, blogs, etc. So uh, lots of good stuff there. No matter that's how great, you like guys. Filter. That's right. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, obviously, in this uh, critical time, this is the, the right tool for the time, and it's great to speak with both of you. I hope everybody stays safe, and uh, we'll be back next time with some more Microsoft 365 information. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Yeah.